Welcome back to another episode of Mugwrap Playground. In this one, I make allyl alcohol. It is the simplest alkenol and no less reactive. It can be condensed to form ethers and esters, react with hydrogen bromides and iodides to form corresponding allyl halides, and with some fancy processing, even turned into propargyl alcohol. Allyl alcohol is also a strong lacrimator, so goggles and at least a wet mask are a must. Now let's get started. The materials you need are glycerol. 95% formic acid, sodium carbonate, and hydrous magnesium sulfate, and molecular sieves. I am first going to add 630 grams of glycerol into a 1 liter flat bottom flask. This is roughly 6.85 moles of glycerol. I'm going to warm it a bit to get it nice and running. I put it in a stir plate on medium. I attach my addition funnel and 200 milliliters of pre-warmed formic acid. This is approximately 5.04 moles of formic acid. I want to slowly add this just to minimize overly concentrated spots that could possibly make doubly and triply esterified glycerol. After, I put it on a sand bath to get even heating. According to organic synthesis, it must be heated quickly or a acrolein could occur. My trick is to first heat it past 10 for 11 minutes, heat it at 10 for 10 minutes, heat it at 9 for 9 minutes, heat it at 8 for 8 minutes, and finally stop at 7, calibrating obviously as according. In a little over half an hour, it does start boiling. I get some condensate, but it seems to struggle to make it over. So I wrap some aluminum foil around it. I also have a water trap set just to prevent atmospheric oxygen from going back in. As the reaction progresses, a mix of water, alcohol, and carbon dioxide will fill the apparatus, lowering the proportion of oxygen. Note, however, this does not eliminate the risk of charring completely. In the hour, I get some allo alcohol, albeit very slowly. Pretty soon though, production gets faster. A lot of it is also gathering in the condenser. The reaction flask itself looks pretty good for the most part. No f charring or frothing or anything like that. More air is also being pushed out. The mechanism is pretty straightforward. First, formic acid condenses with the less hindered part of glycerol using its high acidity as a catalyst. A combination of heat and a proton from another formic acid molecule removes the secondary OH, forming a brief but stable enol. In the presence of 200 plus degree heat, both an allylic and hydride shift occur within the concerted mechanism. Carbon dioxide leaves as a gas and allyl alcohol is quickly vaporized. After a few hours, I shut it off when no more comes over. I have a pretty good yield so far of crude allyl alcohol. My glycerol is just a little discoloration, but it's still more than good enough for a second run. I add in 420 grams of warm glycerol. This is approximately 4.57 moles of glycerol. I add in another 200 milliliters of formic acid slowly. Meanwhile, I put down some molecular sieves and add my collected crude oil alcohol. I also add some sodium metabisulfite to my water trap. With all the reactant I have, everything has to be scaled up too. An hour later, collection restarts. Condensation steadily occurs with the help of the foil pushing the vapors over. The drip rate gets a little faster too. In 5 hours, I'm up about 600 milliliters from less than 400 milliliters earlier. At the end of the night, I'm almost at 800 milliliters. I add 210 grams of warm glycerol in the reaction flask. This is approximately 2.28 moles of glycerol. I top it off with another 200 milliliters of formic acid. In a few hours, collection is steadily nearing the 1000 milliliter mark. However, I notice I have it a little too hot as evidenced by this white vapor stream. My glycerol is also becoming more golden as it breaks down. I stop the reaction before it overflows my collection and put on a small flask. I get a little more distillate with a light greenish yellow color. My reaction flask, however, is practically cooked. When I stop the reaction, I accidentally waited too long to tend to it. 15 minutes too long. However, the suck bag actually seemed to displace and discolor my product. The sodium metabisulfite in the water salted out a good deal of it too. I carefully remove the collection part and pour off the top into a little flask. When the receiving head is empty, I try to pour off more top. There doesn't seem to be any phase line however, so either I was perfect or the two solutions ended up mixing. In the end, this is my total distillate. I know it seems like a lot, but the next step of drying is going to quickly shrink that. For the first half, I slowly scoop in 50 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate. This will neutralize any form of gas that came over and absorb some water. When it rests, I get a rather nice separation. 
The insolubility is even maintained unlike that fluke with the suckback. I drain off the aqueous layer and keep the crude organic layer. With my leftover sodium carbonates, I add the other half of my total distillate, which includes the little flask. However, I get a little less separation. After collecting, I add more sodium carbonate to neutralize and salt out anything, but here's where it gets weird. It ends up becoming a paste. The only way to get my solution back is vacuum filtration. At least it still maintains some insolubility. When I take the density of the mixture, it is over 1. However, it is still very pungent and causes tears. This tells me that while salts are skewing the weights, there must be a decent chunk of allyl alcohol waiting to be extracted. The density of my crude organic layer is 0.882, so I've already bypassed the azeotrope mark and I'm in the end game with this one. Back to my mixture, I add 100 grams of molecular sieves and let it sit. For the crude organic layer, I add 25 grams and distill. Molecular sieves actually work better with heat as it speeds up water movements into its compartments. The yellow alcohol coming over is quite fast. When I finish, I get around 400 milliliters of more pure allyl alcohol. I add my mixture to the molecular sieves and top it off with a lot of the original ones. One thing I noticed with the mixture's distillation is this cheesy exudate. I think there is some acrolein in my product that got polymerized by the sodium carbonates in solution. For my larger receiving flask, I collect only the mixture distillate. I finish in a few hours. It's funny, but I think there's actually a cheese ring in my reaction flask. My distillate is cloudy, but no longer discolored, meaning I only have allyl alcohol and water. Here's a comparison of distillates from my crude organic layer and my aqueous mixture layer. In my pure allyl alcohol, I add 20 grams of magnesium sulfate and chill to just below the freezing point of water to promote the un decahydrate, or the sequestering of up to 11 moles of water instead of 7. I don't have a proper container, so I pour it into an acetone bottle. It should withstand allyl alcohol no problem if it can handle acetone. In my other solution, I add 20 grams of magnesium sulfates, followed by 100 grams of sodium carbonate. What should have been a dehydration combo instead turned my solution milky white. That leads me to vacuum filter again. Even better, my solution got this colored. One thing I did notice, however, was a soft to miscible blob on the bottom. The top solution could absorb it if it got disturbed, so I pipe it out instead. If you didn't see it, this is what was hiding under my larger solution. I add 50 grams of magnesium sulfate and chill it to below 32C. Then I decant off into a 1 liter Erlenmeyer. I do a quick distillation of it only to get a somewhat cloudy solution. I'm not going to dry it anymore however as that would result in more product loss and making a ternary azotrope would require special solvents that I do not have, especially in huge excess. I consulted ChatGPT to come up with a quadratic equation that factored in waters, allo azeotropes and allo alcohols density. Due to its length, I'll put it in the description to just give you the meat and potatoes here. The first solution's density is 0.933, making the concentration 56%, and may I remind you it can still lacrimate at this concentration. Its weight is 203 grams, so I have 113 grams of allo alcohol in there. The second solution's density is 0.864, making the concentration 95%. Its weight is 304 grams, so I have 289 grams of allo alcohol in there. This makes for a total of 402 grams, which is just over 50% yield with respect to the glycerol used. I think the water actually helps as a buffer for what I'm about to do next. What do you think? Should I go the allobromide route or try to make propargyl alcohol? Subscribe and comment down below.